Hey everyone, it's Brittany of BZ Art and today we're going to make the frog from my frog pattern. So this tutorial follows along how to create the frog from my pattern, which you can buy in my store. Before we start, there are some birds in the craft room. They might make some noise. So if you hear background noise happening, that's what's going on. This frog pattern is not too difficult. The body is really, really simple, but the legs can be kind of hard. And if you're not very good at hand sewing, I wouldn't recommend this pattern. It has a lot of hand sewing to attach the legs. So without further ado, let's get started in the frog pattern. The first thing that you should do is start sewing the legs. I cannot remember exactly the order it is in the pattern. So if this doesn't follow exactly, I really apologize. The order is not super important here though. So hopefully you'll still be able to follow along. So what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna sew the legs. This is the front legs. You just place the two pieces right side together and sew around. All right, and I probably should have mentioned it before I started sewing, but you will wanna leave the bottom ending of the legs open to turn them right side out. So once you've sewn it, you're going to want to trim the excess seam allowance. It's because these pieces are so small, if you do not trim the seam allowance, they're not going to turn nicely. It's not super important along the outside of the leg here. I do it because it's a preference. But on the inside here, if you don't cut between these two parts of the leg, you won't be able to turn it. And so you want to get it going to want to get <laughs> as close as you can to those seams without cutting into them. And then I'm going to turn this piece right side out using my hemostats and I'm going to stuff it. I just realized as I looked up, some of that might not have been in the camera. So I'm sorry if that was off screen for you. And once you're stuffed, here, you're just gonna wanna set this aside and do it for the second leg. I've already created all of my legs that I'm going to need, so this video isn't going to be super, super long. Just get that out of the way. Uh, but yeah, so then I'm going to move on to the back leg. Same thing with the back leg pieces. You're gonna place them right side together and sew around leaving this bottom edge open. And if you are not super confident sewing with Minky, definitely do a lot of pinning here. Keep in mind that because I have a walking foot attachment and because I'm very used to this, I don't always pin, but you should definitely pin, pin, pin when using a slippery fabric like this. Once again, I'm going to trim the seam allowance. Hopefully you'll be able to see that better this time. All right, and then I'm going to turn this leg right side out and stuff it. And once that's stuffed, you're going to go ahead and set that aside. I realized I didn't introduce this tool before I started. It's called a stuffing fork. I don't know if you can read that there. There it goes. It's by Barbara Willis Design. I got it from barbarawillisdesign.com and I use it a good bit, but you can also just use a chopstick if you're really struggling. And if you see how this has these little, a little cut in it like that, you can actually cut a chopstick to have that same little design and do the same thing. So how it's designed is you take a pinch here, you put it in there, and because of those two tines, when you spin it, it spins around the edge just like a fork with spaghetti. 
so it makes it a lot easier to stuff your plushies. It's not required for this pattern, it's just a tool that I have that I like to use. Any sort of stuffing tool, like I said, a chopstick, a straw, really anything like that will work. Because this leg is so long and skinny, I find that that helps a lot. Moving on, we are going to do the feet now. So I'm going to start with the front foot. This one is a very small piece, and I do put in the pattern that if you're struggling with these really small pieces, especially under the machine like this, uh, it the seam allowance is not super important on these flat 2D pieces like that where it's just a mirrored piece. It's going to be the same on both sides. It's not super important that it's lined up. It's as long as you sew this correctly, it's going to be correctly on the back side. So if you need, you can cut out a great big square like this, and then you're gonna have a lot of fabric to hang on to to manipulate it better. Uh, so if you need to do that, don't be afraid to do that. Uh, with plushies, the most important thing is that the seam allowance, er, is that the exact sewing lines line up, not necessarily the seam allowance. It's not the same as quilting. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this, and you're gonna leave the top of the foot here open to turn it right side out. Something that I did not mention before, which I think is kind of important, and I wish I had said it before I started sewing, is that when you get to a pointed area like this on a plush pattern, uh, it's best to not sew an exact point. If you get to the point, sew a stitch or two over, and then sew, you're going to get a better turn on your curve there. Whereas if you have an exact, like if it meets just like a V, you're going to get it like kind of a pucker if you can't clip that close enough. So instead of a V, try kind of a U shape, if that makes sense. All right, back to sewing. Just like with the leg pieces, you are going to want to clip the seam allowance. In this case, it's between the toes that it really, really needs to get done. If that doesn't get done, this will not turn right side out. So I just went ahead and turned that right side out and stuffed it. And you're going to set this aside. And now we're going to move on to the back foot, which is just going to be the same thing. Sew around it, leave the top open to turn it right side out, cut in between these toes, and then turn it right side out and stuff it. So instead of pausing to re-explain all that, we're just going to fast forward through it really quickly. Okay, and once that's done, we are going to start attaching our feet to our legs. So the front feet are gonna go on like this, and the back feet are gonna go on like this. You're just going to use a ladder stitch to connect them. And what I like to do when I start is I'll actually gather the opening to the leg open, or to the leg close, I don't write this in the pattern because this isn't necessarily instructions on how to do it, if that makes sense. This is really a personal preference because I hate fighting <laughs> the opening. So I will just do a really quick loose gather there and then I will tuck the ends and any bits of thread back in there. And 
tie it off. And that way, like I said, I'm just not, I'm not fighting with the edges of the fabric or the stuffing or anything like that, and I prefer it this way. It, again, just a preference, you don't have to do this part, it actually takes longer. So if you are comfortable without it, absolutely skip it. And then what I like to do is I like to take and hold this foot with this, these two fingers, these foot, <laughs> this leg with these fingers, and just do a ladder stitch. And the ladder stitch is just in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. That is the front leg done. I've already done the other ones, like I said earlier, so if you haven't done that, <laughs> just do everything a second time to get the second one. And then these will get set to the side here. And then we're going to do the back leg so it attaches again like this, and just same thing. I'm gonna kind of gather this opening shut and then use a the ladder stitch to sew these together. And if you notice in the first one, I did go around twice because it didn't feel quite secure. It felt a little bit floppy this way. So if yours feels a little bit floppy, go around it a second or even third time and it should feel a little bit more secure there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Once that's done, we are going to get to a part that can be kind of tricky here. If you've never seen something like this before, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this back leg and you see how when you squish it down, it uh, it's touching along these lines here. We're going to sew it so that it stays like this. And if you want to, you can just kind of put a stitch here and here and pull them together and a stitch here and here and pull them together but I don't prefer to do that. What I prefer to do is ladder stitch along the entire length. So that's what I'm going to show you in the video, but keep in mind that all you really need to do is make sure that this stays together. So if you don't want to do that much sewing and you don't mind if you can like stick your fingers through these parts, then that is absolutely a faster way to do this. What I like to do is I like to take the needle and I like to insert it on one side of the seam and out on the other side of the seam and then I'll take it up to the top, and same thing inside the seam, outside the seam. It's essentially just a ladder stitch, but it's going to run the entire length of this leg, and then once I'm done doing it on this side, on the top here, I'm gonna do it on the bottom there, just to connect all these pieces. So we are all done there. And again, if you haven't already done that a second time, you should repeat that process for the other leg. And then we have all four leggies. And they are just gonna get set to the side for now. And we are going to start on what I think is definitely the easiest part of the pattern, which is the body. So to start, you're going to take one of the side pieces, and I believe I called this the top piece. Could be the back, I think it's the top. <laughs> Anyway, you're going to pin the side to one edge of the top piece with the right sides together. And then once you've pinned that together, you're gonna sew from, this is point A to point B. Or if you're me, you're gonna run out of thread mid seam and just do a really unfancy cut right here to rethread the machine. Ta-da! 
<laughs> I have magically rethreaded the machine and now I'm going to continue sewing from point A to B. And then I just went and trimmed off the seam allowance on this. This one's a personal preference. You do not have to do that. I think that it helps it look nicer when it's turned right side out. But I do think this is one of the things that only I can tell the difference. <laughs> so then you're going to go ahead and pin the other side piece to the other edge of the top. And sew from A to B. Once you've done that, you're going to take, I believe I've called it the belly piece, and you will line up one edge of it with one of the side pieces here. And pin that in place, and then sew again from A to B. All right, and then you're going to take the other edge of the belly piece here and pin it in place with the other side piece. For this one though, you're gonna leave an opening here about this long to turn it right side out. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. Right, we had some minor battery death, but I'm back again and I'm gonna finish sewing this line. Again, I'm leaving the gap here for us to turn it right side out. Gonna go ahead and trim off this seam allowance and then we are going to insert the safety eyes. So to do that you're going to either use an owl AWL or a pair of tiny sharp scissors like this and make some holes where the eyes are just big enough for your post. You don't want them to be bigger or your eye could slip out and that's just terrifying. We're gonna go ahead and take the eyes, insert them from the right side of the fabric which right now is on the inside of our frog and out through the hole to the wrong side of the fabric and just secure the washer over the post. What I like to do now is I actually trim my posts. This is another one of those things that literally I don't think anyone else will notice. I just think it helps it lay nicer inside of there. So go ahead and do that now for the second eye. And then once I am done inserting the eyes, I'm going to go ahead and turn this right side out and stuff it. Okay, so once you have that nicely stuffed, you're going to go ahead and use a ladder stitch to close the seam. And for me, that means re-threading my needle. But it's just the same as it has been the entire time. Just in one side, out the other, and over to the other end of the seam. So here we've got it. In, out in and out and in and out so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this seam okay and now your body is finished and we are going to move on to what I think is probably the most tedious part of the frog. I wish that I could have thought of a better way to do this, but this is what we came up with. 
uh, we're just going to attach the legs. So <laughs> you're just going to use pins for now to pin the legs into place. I like to use this bottom seam here for the belly and line that up with the bottom of the leggies. I like to keep this back leg kind of far back and I'm just going to pin this one. with kind of a lot of pins because as you sew, they have the tendency to move around and I like them to keep their position. So then I'm gonna take the other back leg and pin it the same so it's nice and even. And then the front legs, so same thing. I like to use the seam along with the bottom of the leg here. I actually tend to take it just so these this toe overlaps it, and then I'll line it up with the bottom of this upper part here, or kind of pull it together. Just seems, just however it seems right. Sometimes, depending on how you stuff it, the frogs sit a little bit differently. So I like to adjust it as needed. And we'll go ahead and pin the other front leg on here. And then we'll give it a little test, make sure it sits nicely. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it because this is curved here, but if it's sitting nice and the legs are supporting it, then it's good to go. So what you're gonna do from here is just stitch every single leg onto the frog. It's a little bit time consuming, but it gets the cutest little legs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, but instead of making you watch it all, we're gonna use a fancy cut. And ta -da! It is all finished. Here you have one completed Kyoto frog. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you make approximately 5 billion more and go take over like a small country or something. And I hope that the frogs bring you a ton of joy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.